So remember always the 8 pin MOSFET has the drain, 8 pin for drain, as you can see, connected together, 3 pins for source, and we have the gate. Okay. So here we have 19 volt, as you can see. So 19 volt will go directly to the drain of the MOSFET. And after the MOSFET receives the control signal in its gate, 19 volt will pass through it to the other side. Please do not take measurements directly here in these pins of any IC because if you try to take measurement here you can burn or short this IC always use extensions okay use extensions for example here for example this pin over here here we have extension directly to this resistor okay and for example the extension of this pin is directly to this capacitor to program the bios you need about four tanks you need a programmer you need the bios ic the failed or the damaged bios and you need the software and of course the firmware so to detect the short circuit here we have a circuit is the inductor as you can see the inductor can never be connected to the ground as you can see the inductor is always connected to the power rail as you can see here we have here the three volt power rail we have the inductor here we have the ground okay so here also as you can see we have the inductor in the power rail as you can see five volt power rail so this bolded lines means a high voltage or a high tension and these lines are control signals here also as you can see we have the inductor in the 1.8 volt power rail so you can use the inductor to detect the short circuit because the inductor can never be connected to the ground so when you find any inductor that is short to the ground means you have a short circuit in that circuit where the inductor belongs for example if you find a short circuit here means this capacitor or this one could be the shorted component or this MOSFET okay please don't forget before making any measurement in the motherboard when you get a laptop a failed laptop always pay attention to connectors because connectors as you can see if you have a failed or a damaged connector you could get a dead motherboard as you can see here Okay, because if two pins, for example, to ground and a high pin are connected, you will get a short circuit. That's why you should always pay attention to connectors. Hi again. So thank you very much to, to follow with me. So we have finished the first section where we have we have seen many informations, including how okay the causes of the laptop motherboard, how to check motherboard visually, etc. Now we are gonna pass to the second section. This section basically is a very is advanced section that every technician and engineer should know. But first, let's for this video we gonna summarize what we have seen for in order to make tank easier for, for you so we gonna we have seen how to diagnose and repair a dead laptop motherboard we have seen all about all these topics so we have seen what is the dead motherboard we have seen that a dead laptop motherboard is a 100 failed motherboard that cannot be all powered on even if you press the power button so even as even if you press the power button nothing happen no led light okay so we call this kind of motherboard a dead motherboard okay so we have seen what is the cause of these motherboards basically there are many causes that can cause a dead motherboard including the short circuit in the second cause is the power jack as you can see the dc jack or the power jack because if the power jack is failed or damaged nothing will happen because the power jack is the bridge between the input power and the motherboard okay and of course you can't find a blown component especially asmd component like fuses diodes resistors etc 
Okay, as you can see here, we have a schematic. As you can see, where we have the power jack. As you can see, we have the power jack. We have here inductor, as you can see. So here we have 19 volts. Let's assume, for example, if this power jack is damaged or shorted. So the 19 volt will not pass to the next stages in the motherboard. Let's assume, of course, if we have, for example, this capacitor is shorted to the ground, we will get a short circuit. Means a deed shorted motherboard here also we have another power jack here we have two inductors let's assume that these inductors are bad or damaged so the 19 volt will stop here okay so as you can see here we have another power jack you can find of course in the beginning in the input voltage uh, inductors diodes or you can find even mosfets as you can see you can find mosfets you can find one mosfet or two mosfet or switches as we have seen before okay so always the dc jack is connected to the first switch the drain of switch as you can see here and after receiving the control signal the 19 volt will pass directly to the next side of the mosfet okay so pay attention here we have 19 volt here we will get 19 volt because this is a switch okay N not not a regulator like in the ram circuit or processor circuit okay we have seen that the first cause we have said the super io the super io as you can see is the chip or the ic that is responsible for the whole power in the motherboard okay that's why when you have or you uh, this ic is failed or damaged of course the motherboard will stop working completely okay so to check basically this ic you can just check the ceramic capacitors around it if you find more then one ceramic capacitor, shorter ceramic capacitor means automatically that this IC is bad. Okay, and of course you can check the serviceability of, the, of this IC using, we have seen three methods, using just your finger to check its heat, using the ceramic capacitors around it, and of course, the, of course, let's see, the three methods, we have the third method, okay. First method by checking the head, second method by checking the ceramic capacitors, and third method by checking, yes, the inputs and outputs. So, we got it. of course, in this part, you should use the schematic to know where is the inputs and where is the outputs. Okay, so basically, there is many types <coughs> of super IO. So the fifth cause is the BIOS basic input output system. As you can see, we have seen that a failed BIOS can cause a dead computer motherboard when a firmware inside it becomes corrupted because, as you know, the BIOS contains a firmware inside it. When this firmware or the software or program is corrupted or damaged, automatically the post, the power on soft test, will not be happen. As you can see. The motherboard will stop working because the BIOS is responsible for the post or power on self test and computer booting and the computer cannot turn on without the self test. Of course, the BIOS is the charged IC that, that is charged to do the self test or the power on self test and without the self test nothing will be happen. That's why you should always pay attention to the BIOS. And of course we have seen the pin out of the BIOS. We have seen here we have as you can see the here pin number one, pin number two, pin number two we have right protect, we have the ground, we have the VDD here you should always find 3.3 volt as we have seen. Okay we're gonna see it. Here as you can see we have note when you encounter a failed BIOS chip, you should program flash it with appropriate firmware using the BIOS program. We have the program, we have the BIOS, we have the software and the firmware. Four things to make or to reprogram the BIOS. You need the BIOS IC itself, you need the programmer, you need the software and you need the firmware. And of course, here we have the holder, the holder that is comes with the programmer and of course you can use a programmer as you can see here like this one you can just connect this one directly to the motherboard the, the sixth cause we have seen the connectors i told you that the connectors are very mandatory you should always check the connectors because a damaged connector can cause a short circuit where when for example two pins are connected together 
And of course, if the pin is the ground and the three volt or the high pin connected together, automatically the short circuit means something will be burned out in the motherboard. And of course, the motherboard will become dead motherboard. So we, can, we have seen how to diagnose a dead laptop motherboard. We have seen that there is many steps. The first step is to check the motherboard visually. The second step, step the laptop adapter. You should check the laptop adapter. Or here we have the laptop, the laptop adapter. Because many technicians neglect this laptop adapter. When you get a failed laptop motherboard, nothing happened. You should first check whether the adapter is good or not, whether the adapter gener generate 19 volt or 18 volt or not. After that, move on to the motherboard. Okay. Then you should check the power jack. Okay, as you can see here, we have the power jack. Then the presence of plus V but 19 volt in the motherboard and then 3 volt, 5 volt, and then 3 volt into pin number 8 of the BIOS. As you can see here. With this pin number 8 of the BIOS, we have here pin number 8 of the BIOS. Always in the pin number 8 of the BIOS, you're going to find 3.3 volt without pressing on the motherboards. Okay, so that's it. And of course, we're going to we gonna see the inductor. We have seen that the inductors or coils are never connected to the ground. So in every motherboard, the inductor or coil can never be connected to the ground. Always the inductor in the computer or laptop motherboard is connected to the power rail. Okay. So if you find any inductor that is connected to the ground, it means you have a short circuit in the circuit. That the inductor belongs to it. Okay. Proof. Let's take a look to the schematics of some circuits to the laptop motherboard. Here, for example, we have three volt power rail. We have the inductor connected directly to the three volt power rail. Here we have the ground. Okay. Here, five volt power rail. We have inductor. Here, 1.8 volt connected to inductor. So the inductor can never be connected to the ground. So how to troubleshoot the short circuit? Using the multimeter by choosing here the diode option, or of course you will find usually in 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 multimeters you will find the diode option and the buzzer option in the same as you can see here the same the same place. Okay. So how to check the serviceability of this? Is IU, of course, we have seen how to check the serviceability of this IU. You can use just your finger and or the thermal camera to check the heat. You can use the serum capacitors around the SIO, and of course, you can use the data sheet of this SIO and check whether the inputs are exists. If the all inputs are okay and the outputs are not okay, means the SIO is bad. But if you find that the inputs one or two inputs are missing, means it's not the SIU, it could be another thing. Okay, so we have the BIOS and we're gonna, we have seen the connector. So uh, this is guys just a summarize about, uh, about all that we have seen in this section. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to move on to the second section where we get, we're gonna see something advanced advanced tank in terms of repair that will impact you a lot that uh, we something that you will be interested in it a lot so thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe like the video if you like it of course and share the video and for anyone who want to join me in the patreon page you are very welcome there in the patreon page i share a very useful and unique content including laptop schematics including tips and tricks i can assist you closely in the patreon page you are very welcome and of course I have a website link in the description box and of course you are very welcome. Thank you very much and don't forget the comments, you can ask me anything. Take care, see you tomorrow with the next video.